Hi, and thanks for logging on to the Daily Dvar, and here's a brand new halacha for you, and it's for uh, Thursday, the first day of November. Here we go. Today's halacha, about a couple of times halachically, when you're not only not allowed to speak, but you're not even allowed to communicate. Let me explain what I mean. Um, if you're in the middle of saying Shema, when you're fulfilling that biblical command of saying Shema, you're not allowed to speak. You're also not allowed to communicate at all. So that if someone happens to ask you a question while you're in the middle of reciting Shema, you shouldn't say like, you know, a little motion as to uh, wait one minute, or nothing, anything. You should just continue saying Shema, period, period. That's how it works. It's, it's a little hard to accomplish this because the person's going to like, oh, did I say something wrong? Did I make you mad? You're not responding, and you just, uh, you have to just stare right through that and keep saying Shema because you're not allowed to communicate at all while saying Shema. Also, while you're putting on your tefillin, from the time that you put the main loop onto your arm until the main loop is on your head, no interruption is supposed to happen. It's not just because you've made the bracha on tefillin, because then this law would apply always. It's because God, the way he describes the putting on of the tefillin, seems to imply that they're supposed to go like very, very directly into each other, with no pauses, no communicating. And so, same thing. If someone comes to ask you a question, you're supposed to just continue putting on your tefillin, and not respond at all. I'm going to end quickly by telling you a story about how once there was a great rabbi of the Gemara who was saying Shema, wouldn't respond, uh, and then uh, he was sitting at his uh, booth selling stuff, and an Arab came and offered him some money for an item that he was selling. He didn't respond because he was in the middle of the Shema. So the Arab assumed he was just being a hard bargainer and offered a higher price. No response. And then the Arab offered a higher price, and a higher price, and a higher price, and he had already raised the price to much, much, much higher than the original offer. All the while, the rabbi just kept reciting Shema and made no, um, no acknowledgement of any of the offers until finally when he finished Shema, he said, I'll sell it to you for the $5 that you originally suggested. And he said, wow, you're weird. You bargained me all the way up to $1,000, and then you, after all that, you agreed to sell it to me for 5 He said, well, I heard all your offers. Five was fair, and I agree to make a fair sale of this thing. And just because you were crazy enough to not understand that I was saying Shema, and you upped your offer many, many, many times, it's just not fair. That's not the right amount. I was just saying Shema, and I couldn't respond. So I will sell it to you at the first suggested price. Needless to say, the Arab was amazed at the diligence of this Jew. And uh, he was just following the halacha, and that's how it's supposed to be. Thanks for logging on. Log on again tomorrow for more. Bye-bye.